If you have IPI limitations on Amazon, now SoStocked is actually pulling in your restock limits daily so that you no longer need to worry about that and making recommendations on your forecast as such. Now, in our demo account, uh, I'll give you an example. So what you want to do is go to your forecast. Then from there, you can expand any of your products, come into your order schedule, expand it out, and now you'll see an IPI limit calculator where you have your threshold, where your current inventory is at, and your max ship quantity. We even break down how much your max ship quantity is in days. Now, if you want to use your IPI limit, all you have to do is simply check the box and save and apply to this forecast or use the global settings to save and apply to all for the supplier, etc. Now, from there, there are certain recommendations that we do have. You will potentially in my uh, opinion, probably want to set your order schedule to something along the lines of as needed because now you're able to either leverage the max and min units, whether you want to set your buffer and even a max that could potentially be below your IPI threshold. For example, if I have a threshold of 200 units and I want my max to be potentially only 100, I could set that max there as well as I'm able to set warehouse uh, min and max for buffer. So setting up your your limits is really useful. Now what I will do right here just because I want to make it simple, I'm going to set everything to zero because that's just going to mean I'm just going to use my straight IPI limits. I'm going to save it and then what the other component that you're probably going to want to do is go to your transfer schedule. How often are you going to want to transfer from your warehouse or your 3PL into Amazon? Typically, we see a lot of people setting this up to around an every two week kind of schedule, whether it's a Monday, Tuesday, whatever, and they save and apply that, which is nice because now your order schedule and the last component of it is going to be updating your default lead times. So something that's going to be really critical is coming into your lead times and making sure that instead of especially if you have a warehouse, instead of going to FBA directly, you're going to want to have them end at your third party warehouse and pick which warehouse that is. So typically you would want to set something up where it's in production and whether it's ocean freight, ground freight, whatever's going on. Um, let's say I don't have ocean, I just have in production, then it goes ground freight and then it ends at my warehouse. I'm probably going to want to save and apply that because what it's doing is it's you can see it's adjusted it to say that it's going to order inventory to my warehouse and then from there it's going to transfer it in as my IPI limits increase and decrease. One last thing that we uh, highly suggest is express lead times. So this is something that if you are ever in a pinch are you able to get things quicker? For example is your production time able to be cut down? from 25 days to 20, or another very common one is that it can go air freight in a single day. So now I've cut down my lead time to 22 days and it's still gonna end up there, or in a best case scenario, you may be able to actually send it directly to FBA. Um, now, whether you want to check on that inventory or not is really up to your logistical prowess, but um, that's totally up to you and your process internally. So I'm gonna set this up like this, and now you can see my default is 31. I want to set an express lead time, and the last component is transfer time. How often am I going to transfer um, those every two weeks from my warehouse directly into Amazon? So that may take 15 days, that may take 10 days. On average, we see a lot of people, especially in the United States, where it takes anywhere between 10 to 15 days. I'll set it up for 10 days, and remember that. On all these, you can leverage global settings here to save and apply these uh, options to more than just uh, this forecast alone. Now, from here, you're going to start to see when your orders are going to need to happen, when they should arrive, when you have existing orders in your timeline, and then when they will arrive, and then how often you're actually going to want to transfer those in, in order to meet your IPI limits and to get things to... Amazon as quickly as possible. Now, one last component, there will be under bulk import and export a feature to manually upload your IPI limits if there are ever any issues where you do not see your uh, IPI limit pulled in. 
And the last component that we'll go over, we've even added components now where there will be IPI limits and max ship quantities per marketplace listed on your inventory page, which you can then manipulate using the columns and click and drag them and move them around where you want to.